Two, three honors, basically all of them. Um, and next year, I'm I'm going to be going part time. So I'll be doing um, what am I doing? Two French one classes and one three honors class. Okay. Very cool. Um, and this, I'll introduce Katie for you. This is um, Katie Cavanaugh. She has uh, founded five international film festivals. She's a uh, Stanford graduate and she um, specializes in design thinking. And uh, she founded Screen 360 and we've been working on this. We're in a Stanford class right now called Hacking for Recovery. It's a pop-up lean startup model class by Steve Blank. And he's putting us through the ringer this week. So we, we've, uh, yeah. we've had 30 interviews. And I, I was like, well, why don't I reach out to, to uh, Mitty? And I reached out to um, Shelly Hopkins. And she gave me your contact information. So then I reached out to you. So you must be getting good at interviewing now after doing 30 of them. <laughs> I, I would hope so. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'll just... How, how, did you get a chance to look at Screen 360 TV a little bit? I did. So it looks like it's, if I'm, I'm understanding my 10 minutes looking through it, um, a platform where a film could be shown and <clears throat> people remotely can watch the film simultaneously. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's okay. right. Yeah. So what makes us kind of unique in what we what our slogan is, is um, connecting international peers near and far. So we're trying to kind of cultivate cultural literacy in students, especially in the high school level, but K through 12, through international cinema. So um, bringing in international films to the curriculum to hopefully um, work with Common Core standards and AP themes um, to, to kind of educate students in that way um, so it is curated material. It's synchronous material. So we're trying to build a prototype where kids, students from all over the country and world can view these international films together and then discuss them afterward, whether mm -hmm. um, it, that's doing activities together, such as um, discussion questions or um, essay prompts or um, we're thinking of providing a, like a language um, vocabulary translation as well. So we're, we're trying to perfect the curriculum that, that could go along with each film to help teachers um, with their curriculum. So that's something we're like focused on right now. Um, but yeah, that's basically what it is, is, is a platform for students to watch international films synchronously with, with other students across mm -hmm. the world. So how do you, um, in terms of discussions after, is it, is the assumption that everyone is speaking the same language? I'll, I'll answer that. Um, uh, yes, and there are guides. So initially we were designed for classrooms and that th there would be an instructor and if that instructor does not speak uh, the common language, which let's say it's English, um, then we, we, we will provide, we provide a dialogue list of, of uh, in that language. Um, but we are finding, we're using the, the universal standard that the Berlin Film Festival uses and uh, they call it fit, fits the uh, translation in the, uh, in between the dialogue, in the spaces in the dialogue. So, um, it would be overdubbed. And I've seen, I'm sure you've seen films from countries that don't have synchronization and sometimes there is an, an over mm -hmm. voice, a voice dubbed over. So it's something like that. Okay. And, uh, so that's, that, that is our step. If the if the um, viewers are not readers, okay. Could it be organized in terms of um, common language, like for example, a film that um, students in 
um, you know, French speaking Canada or Africa, West, the West Coast of Afri Africa or France or like that? That's an excellent idea. Sure. Sure. I think it could be organized in several different ways from both the geographical location to learn something specifically about that location through the language, as you suggest. Um, and yes, there would be many ways that it could be organized. And mm -hmm. uh, initially, um, a lot is manual. So, for instance, uh, your class registers, we have a discussion. And I want to understand uh, what your needs are, what your curricular goals are. There's some reg registration. And then, um, and then we work from there. And I send you a, a deck that shows you how to set up your room and uh, best case scenarios, and that sort of thing. And then we time it uh, so far. So say we're six weeks out and we're scheduling an engagement. Uh, two weeks before, we check in, and then uh, the night before, the day before, we make sure the internet is uh, strong. We've done that before already, but we just we can't connect again. And then uh, a half an hour the day of, and just to make sure that we're on, we have good, strong internet. And mm -hmm. then, then we go in, and the conversation is moderated uh, so by someone like myself, uh, or uh, we're hoping that we would embed in a film school at some point. And so someone uh, who is, is trained and also has the, the skill, the film festival skill, would also be moderating mm -hmm. and, and so supporting the guide, depending on how, how much the, the guide wanted to participate. It's usually, it would be passed to the guide and the guide would ask their class but in, in this case it would be uh, tiles I suppose and um, yeah the this this new format of course is going to be giving us a or it already does give us a whole new way of looking at things yeah have you been have you been directing your class I guess through March uh, April and May online yeah mm -hmm. it's not um my preference, <laughs> but yeah. we are doing the best we can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. And I can, if we had a filmmaker come in, for instance, it would be very much like this, and mm -hmm. and the filmmaker would be on. And uh, uh, one case we had uh, was a, an Oakland second grade actually, and we showed a film in Farsi from a director who was in another city in Germany, and I was in Berlin. And uh, the filmmaker happened to, well, he was Iranian, and he uh, spoke Farsi with a little girl who was in the Oakland class, who was a new immigrant there, and they spoke Farsi together. And mm -hmm. the rest of the class was just super thrilled yeah. to hear their classmate speak a language they'd never heard before. And, yeah. and then discuss it. The whole lesson on Iran. That's cool. Very valuable. Yeah, very valuable lesson. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, I think the the engagement is is momentous and uh, hard mm -hmm. hard to get uh, unless somebody else really uh, endeavors to do it. Yeah, and looks like we'll be doing distance teaching again in the fall, at least initially. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so the fall would be a good time to do it, mm -hmm. to to pilot, for instance. Yeah, yeah, it looks it looks interesting. I, um, I'm always interested in in, in trying to find um, less traditional ways of mm -hmm. using film in the classroom. <laughs> yeah, I guess my my question is. Um, are you trying, like, how are you trying to solve the problem of cultural sensitivity or the lack thereof? Because it is definitely a problem. Um, and, and are there specific curriculum materials that you use now that sort of is geared to that problem that we have? Good question. Um, well, in my, my upper classes, uh, my AP class, we uh, do it through literature. Mm -hmm. 
where we um, read a novel that takes place during World War II, and it's a story about um, a Jewish family in Paris. Well, originally Russian Jewish, and they made their way to France after the the pogroms, and um, so now they they sense that they're in danger again. So mom and dad send the kids off. They're eight and 10 years old by themselves to get to the south of France to meet up with their older siblings. And um, it, there actually is a, a movie, but I've never been able to get a version of it that would work in the U.S. <laughs> what is it? It's called, I could write it in the chat if you want. Sure. I might understand it if you say it in French. And set to be. Uh -huh. a, a, a bag of marbles. Mm. Oh. The, the story starts out with the boys playing a game of marbles. and yeah. Do you know who the director is? I don't know the director. The author is um, Joseph Joffo. It's, it's autobiographical. Uh-huh. Well, I'll look for that. That's nice. Thank you. Because we, we are, are building a list uh -huh. of of films that uh, engage this this sentiment. Um, mm -hmm. When we're when we're looking, when we talk about international, many people think outside of the United States. And why are we talking about outside of the United States when there's so much going on now in the United States? And we need to focus on our race problem here. Mm -hmm. um, so this is these parallel stories, of course, and, and you know, and that's why you show them. These parallel stories are um, valuable for addressing, getting, it's not a circuitous way, but it is an, it's an, it's an immersive way that people can um, step into without uh, without shutting down, I think. Yeah, and you know, for some, I've always kept um, these themes for my upper division kids, first of all, because of the, the language barrier, you know, French one kids just don't have the, the skill set yet to be able to follow um, the French. Um, as well, and also I was concerned about, you know, do they have the emotional maturity? But I, I think more and more that um, they actually should be exposed to that, like, yeah, from the very beginning. And we, we, I showed them um, my my younger kids um, a film. Again, it takes place in Europe because that's my um, uh, language um, called, in, in French it's Joyeux Noël, and in English it's Merry Christmas. It's about World War I and the, the trench warfare, the German and the French, um, I mean, wait, no, Chris, German, World War French, I. and Scottish troops getting together. It's a true story. Um, mm -hmm. Again, um, trying to understand where intolerance comes from and, and yeah, just yeah. exposing them to that. But I mean, it's, it's true that we in, in the U S have a lot of um, cinematography that the only thing is it not work so much for me because I really need it to be in the target language. <laughs> so that's sure. why I've always kind of sought, you know, international, Right. Um, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And How you haven't found an NTSC copy. Yeah. Well, it, it would have to be streamed. Yeah, now it's even more difficult with um, country blocks. Yeah. Yeah. How, how often do you show films in your classes? Well, films like feature length films, not very. Uh, frequently, um, we we also use. There's a couple of video platforms. 
One of them is called Ed Puzzle, where you could take shorter uh, video. Let's say like max would be like three to five minutes and the students interact with the video. Not, not at all in the way that you're describing, um, mm -hmm. but it's more, you know, educational, not, not really having to do with, you know, understanding of different cultures, but it could be. And then um, another platform is called Yavla, which which you must be familiar with because I'm sure Jackie used it. And yeah. Before. Um, so we tend to gravitate towards shorter length film just because of you know the the material, all the material that we need to get through in a school year. The um, a feature length film would you know cut into um, time that you know we only have so many minutes and we need to. Uh, manage them. But that said, um, I um, at least try and do one film in a school year. Mm. Do you think it's it would be more helpful for you if you were given like shorter, maybe clips, like 10 minute clips or, or TV shows even that you could show like one episode that's like 20 minutes or 15 minutes? Would, do you think that'd be more feasible for classroom settings in your classroom absolutely and you could really you can deliver a message a powerful message in 10 minutes mm -hmm. you know? so yeah i'm a great fan of uh shorts <laughs> mm -hmm. how much do you think um i, I know you said yabla and and uh ed puzzle how, do you know how much um, MIDI pays for those services to license those services? Um, Yavla, it, it, it depends um, on the language, um, but typically it's 5 to $10 a student. Okay. A year. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Edpuzzle, I believe, is free, although the, I think there's a professional version. I'm not sure about y'all. That might be free. Okay. So say if we had French films in, in the French language and we provided discussion questions in French and in English and we provided vocabulary from the film translated from French to, to English and the film also you could choose if it had subtitles or, or not subtitles. Um, would you, would you be interested in showing that in your classroom or wh what else would you need to want to show it? What else would you want with the film to be able to introduce it into your classroom? Um, yeah, I, I definitely would be interested and I'm, I'm also intrigued by the idea of other students. I'm assuming the same general age group. Mm -hmm. um, watching it and then um maybe my kids being able to communicate with the other kids i think that would be um i think my kids would be um you know really interested and it would make them uh it would capture their attention much more than just doing a you know static kind of typical yeah. video activity Mm -hmm. We're trying to figure out the time zones because obviously <coughs> if we connect to a classroom in France. They're nine hours ahead. Yeah. yeah. Right. But right. Even, even connecting to a classroom in just in California, another French um, language classroom, do you think that would be valuable or do you want to be connected to a classroom in France or do, how valuable do you think being connected to another French classroom somewhere in California Let's say, for example, maybe in um, rural. Let me think, say in, um, in San Francisco or the yeah. uh, the sure. Allianz. Yeah. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah, because there's um, there's a lot of you know French kids that are at the Lycée Français in San Francisco. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. 
How how do you think? How would you recommend Screen Three Hundred and Sixty to get more teachers engaged? Um, I'm assuming word of mouth um, would probably be the most effective. I mean, actually, when I was talking to you. My we have a new French teacher coming on board, and I was gonna um, forward your email to her because I'm pretty sure she would be interested. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'd be yeah forward her email for sure. Um, um, another another thing, um, like there's there's a lot of you know foreign language associations that um, your email could be forwarded to as well. Um, as a matter of fact, I can't. There's a woman who's kind of this email guru like if you she's like the the craigslist of you know world languages <laughs> oh that's great <laughs> that is interesting yeah yeah i mean i'd be happy to give you her her name and an email but yeah she's the one like and actually she uh runs a lot of conferences language conferences out of uh, stanford uh-huh who, yeah. who is that is that Sally? ava Sally, um, God, what the heck's her name? See, I see her emails all the time, so it's oh. just, um, sorry. That's all right. Sorry. Um, let me get her name here. Yeah, Sally Hedgecroft Mearns. Uh, huh. Yeah, and her email is Stanford uh, email. So let me get her. I could text it to you. Yeah, anything um, <laughs> language related, world language related, oh, she's okay. happy to. And And if she sends it to everybody, that'll be like, a gazillion people like basically any world language teacher in the Bay Area. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. I wonder if my sister has that. Um, Is there anyone else you recommend we speak to? For um, um, I can't think of because you you the email I got was sent to all the or a lot of the the teachers in my department. Mm -hmm. um, you might want to send it to the Alliance Francaise. Okay. Like there's one in Palo Alto. I know that. Uh huh. And um, there's also one the. The, the Santa Clara County, I think. I'm not positive. I can look that up too. So that's um, Sally. Sorry. So appreciate this. Thank you. Yeah. That's really helpful. Yeah. Um, and actually, there's a, a French cine club uh, in Palo Alto. Oh. Interesting. Yeah, that, I mean, what you're describing could almost be like a an event. Right. I think we'll, we'll need to do some events to, to launch and attract um participants mm -hmm. so we will do some uh, feature events yeah so let me um I'll, I'll forward you um the email like the most recent one i got jack okay. and that has i just sent it it's okay. the talks about the the senate club okay I'll and it's in palo alto yeah.
And um, I'll forward your email to um, my new colleague, um, Lori. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure she'll be interested as well. Okay. That yeah. would be, that's very helpful. Thank you so much. Really. Yeah. It means a lot. Would you, yeah. would you be interested in potentially piloting it in your classroom in the fall? Yeah, I would. Do I just click on the button on the website that you? Um, well, I'll keep in touch with you because we might be, um, I don't know. That's the, that's the MVP we have right now. That's our prototype, but, um, we're thinking of creating an app, um, which we might do soon, but I'll let you know. And then, hopefully we can get some good French films and, and I'll try to make a curriculum uh, specifically for your class and, and uh, I'll speak with your other colleagues and, um, okay. and then we'll see if, if you like it, maybe we'll get some reactions from your students and you yeah. can tell us what they think. Yeah, absolutely. See how it goes and we can keep working, working forward. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, the big thing about um, our language department is like we're really huge on students being able to communicate, mm -hmm. um, not just understand. So the idea of having actual, you know, live students somewhere else that they can interact with, that kind of gives them, they have skin in the game now and they, mm -hmm. you know, it's very motivating for them and exciting and, you know, being able to use their language. So, mm -hmm. um, any, you know, kind of opportunity to, to do that kind of thing is really interesting to me. Okay, great. Yeah, we'll keep in touch then. Yeah, awesome. Okay, thank you so much. Have a great 4th of July weekend. You too. Take care. Thank you so much. Thanks, Rose. Good to Bye. meet you. Nice to meet you. Bye.